Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yes, this is going to be a movie review, but it's going to be a fitting tribute to one of the most legendary, handsome actors of all time named Burt Reynolds. But sad to say, he passed away at the age of 82 due to cardiac arrest. Yeah, he had a heart attack. And didn't see it coming because apparently he was having some heart problems uh, a few of the years. He is getting old. But nevertheless, he would always be remembered. Mostly for his TV series uh, Gunsmoke, as well as Evening Shade, come to mind. But most of all, his films such as Deliverance. The, the Longest Yard, both the original and remake. Smokey and the Bandit films, along with the Cannibal Run films. All Dogs Go to Heaven, when he did the voice of Charlie. He even did films like Switching Channels, Sharky's Machine, yeah, Hooper. Breaking In, Boogie Nights, all come to mind. And just recently, The Last Movie Star, which I just reviewed a month and a half ago. I was so lucky to watch that film because um, it definitely plays a fitting tribute to him. I mean, it really shows that um, he can definitely do something like this. I definitely think writer and director Adam Rickham to showcase that because after all he's also a big fan of his and this is definitely uh, his dream. But if you haven't seen that movie, for all of the fans of Reynolds out there, for all of Burke's fans out there, definitely check it out. I also enjoyed uh, Cop and a Half and, and some of the other ones that he did, too, just to keep up. So as a tribute to him, I'm going to review one film that he's most famous of, as opposed to the other films he's done, called Deliverance. It's a survival of the fittest uh, drama and thriller about four men from Atlanta, they decide to spend a two-day camping weekend you know, going on a canoeing ride until it suddenly becomes a nightmare. Because after all, survival is the name of the game. It stars Burt Reynolds, once again, along with John Boyd, Nate Beatty, Ronnie Cox, yes, who went on to do Robocop as Dick Jones, as you may remember him from. Yeah, this is one of the rarest occasions where they actually did use vocals in the movie. So there's Ed Ramby, Billy Redden, Bill McKinney, Hilbert Cowboy Coward, yes, that's his uh, last name, James Dickley, who's also the writer of the novel, and he also wrote the screenplay for this. Macon McCallman, Belina Betty, and Charlie Borman. Written once again by James Dickley, you know, based on his novel, and it's directed by John Borman, who's also the producer of the film. The movie begins when we meet four men from Atlanta Louis Medlock, Ed Gentry, Bobby Tripp, and Drew Bollinger, all played by Burt Reynolds, John Voigt. Ned Beatty and Ronnie Cox. They decided to go canoeing all the way down at a river in a remote northern Georgia wilderness, which they're about to have fun, but they suddenly witness the area that's all the way straight to the Kahula Wasasi River that's already being flooded by construction of a dam. Now, Lewis and Ed 
are experienced outdoor men, while Bobby and Drew are the Novi's. But they're traveling all the way down, even though the locals uh, by the Georgia are, are not welcome there. But of course, they are city slickers. So anyway, traveling in pairs, so they brought in their canoes, they're being separated, and they decided to have the best time of their lives, you know, going for all these wild rapids on their canoe, so they're actually having a race, all the way until they stop by the riverbank, actually hunting some food, you know, which Lewis actually brought in his uh, bow and arrow to actually hunt a fish, so... They're just camping out uh, for the night so they can get ready for the next day. Um, that is until we have two mountain men who suddenly uh, caught Bobby and Ed and they were attacked until Lewis and Drew came to the rescue and actually killed one of them. Which is, and by the way, they're both hillbillies, keep that in mind. And that's where they started to take a stand on what they should do, since this is basically against the law to kill someone. So they're trying to find a way to either use this as evidence, or at this rate, bury him. And that's what they did. Um, after that... They had to continue to go down the river, which the rapids were very wild. It was going pretty strong until, until suddenly uh, Drew all of a sudden got killed. And only uh, three of them were left, yeah, with Lewis um, already have suffered a broken leg. And they begin to find out that there's actually one man all the way on top of the cliff that's going after them. So it was up to Ed to actually climb all the way up up the top of the gorge with the bow and arrow that Lewis has and be able to kill him. And he did. So then he took the body, he tied it up with a rope and is also ready to get down too but he fell in along with the body and this is where he shows it to Bobby and Lewis who's already asleep because you know, he's trying to hold on to the pain that he's getting so then they they all left you know, canoeing all the way down trying to find Drew they did, and Drew, of course, is dead. He was actually, um, his arm was already broken. It wasn't uh, in the right place. It was like, like leaning on like this. Um, kind of like this, actually. <laughs> uh, but it was broken. So that's where their plan was to actually dump them by the river once they try to make it back to their place and they're being picked up by all the locals including the ambulance just to take them to a hospital nearby you know, right near the church so that way they had to change their story to see what exactly what happened but apparently they didn't believe them at this point and and then the sheriff suddenly found out about this, and, and this is where they, they tell them to leave, never come back there again. And they sure remember the day that this happened, and it, it basically took the guts to, to survive down by the river. And they, even though and one of them didn't make it. Um, but it, it's a very riveting thriller. Very well made for its time. Um, 
Of course, the most infamous scene that really got to me, too, the first time I saw this movie, uh, the scene where both Bobby and Ed were, were being raped by the two guys. Yeah, one of them actually told them to squeal like a pig on Bobby and you know, rides on him, humps on him, you know, you know, by which Bobby had to strip all of his clothes up to his underwear and and the mountain man actually pulls down his, his underwear and humps on him and rides on him and tell him to squeal while Ed is being tied up by a tree with, with his belt uh, straight into his neck because yeah, because one mountain man with a shotgun tied him up because they were going to get ready to be raped yeah it's very disturbing but it doesn't hurt the movie because we know exactly how it was going to happen but in the end I mean there's a lot of um, memorable quotes in the movie, mostly coming from Burt Reynolds too, like it's a debating moment uh, where Lewis actually had to say to Ed as opposed to Bobby and and Drew because even Drew couldn't agree yeah except for Bobby and Ed well this is just after they, they killed the hillbilly who actually humped and raped Bobby this is what Lewis has to say to Ed. Now listen Ed, damn it. If we can't get out of this vein without questions asked, we get connected up with that body and the law, this vein's gonna be hanging over us for the rest of our lives. We gotta get rid of that guy. And Drew says, just how are we gonna do that, Lewis? Where? And then Lewis just goes around saying, anywhere everywhere nowhere <laughs> yeah. great moment great line too and especially for his uh, his macho uh, exterior here uh, there's that one scene where <laughs> uh, where he was actually speaking to um, to Bobby where we beat it didn't we didn't we beat that you don't beat it you don't beat this river you know, while they were in the race. Um, there's even that line, and I mentioned that scene from the movie, uh, The Last Movie Star, which they show it, which I know they use the old Burt Reynolds, as we know, and you see the younger version of him, for the famous scene. Because um, that's supposed to be John Voight's character, Ed. And Lewis actually tells a question to Ed. Why do you go on these trips with me, Ed? And Ed says, I like my life, Lewis. And he says again, Yeah, but why do you go on these trips with me? You know, sometimes I wonder about that. And then he, you know, he grabs the, uh, the bow and arrow and he shoots the, the fish. Because you know, he's going, they're going fishing. And he says, Here's to you, Lewis great moment. And of course, who couldn't forget the, the most famous scene in the movie at the beginning of the film where they were just about to get some gas, where Drew suddenly spots a banjo boy named Lonnie, who's played by Billy Redden. Yeah, and that's this is where they started dueling with each other. And yeah, he plays his guitar while the boy plays his banjo. Uh, and they just they started uh, doing with each other and they, they played all the way and, and they're all dancing and you know they're just having fun really love that moment and I, I know this movie also uh, kind of borrowed that uh, from the movie uh, Tainted Adventures How I Spent My Vacation because you have the the, the possum that Buster and Babs Bunny had spotted is actually a take on Deliverance. So, yeah, where <laughs> Buster was just uh, <laughs> trying to communicate uh, with uh, you know the banjo possum. So, that was fun. 
And of course, you even saw them again on the bridge, you know, just when they're canoeing all the way down. Anyway, um, I was always a sucker for survival of the fittest movies. I mean, we had several others that follow even after Deliverance, like The River Wild, just like Deliverance, but even more intense. But maybe not as intense, but just. But even as intense as it turns out, and even though the film is PG 14, this is R rated, of course. Yeah, surviving the Game. Yeah, with Ice T, along with Gary Busey, yeah, Rector Howell, John C. McGinley, yeah, where they had to hunt uh, for men, like The Edge, and as well as um, The Revenants, No Escape, the prison film, all come to mind. They're very interesting. Because you never know what's going to happen next. You know, you, you want to be hunted by, you know, by locals or a bear, you know, wardens, or maybe even your best friend who suddenly becomes the villain. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, also, the movie uh, is slow paced, so it doesn't go uh, pretty fast as you may think. I mean, the movie is only an hour and 49 minutes, so it's the perfect pacing that they got for it. And even for those scenes, um, there was no music being played in the background. I mean, they only had like just a few uh, scores uh, joining in. And the score, of course, was done by Eric uh, Weisenberg. And they were actually having copyright issues uh, with the song Dueling Banjos. But they had the arrangement later on. And everything. Um, but it definitely had wonderful cinematography by Bamos uh, Zygmunt. Uh, it definitely captures uh, the spirit of of going out back to the uh, the nature of the woods and the, the beautiful sights of the river. Everything. It, it's just beautiful. Uh, also some beautiful close-ups and some shots uh, from the back and the front, like like the close-ups of uh, both you know, Burt Reynolds and John Voight uh, riding inside the truck. So you just see the close-up of their backs and they're just speaking, moves around. And perfect shot right there, or, or any of these other interesting shots. For a movie that was made in 1972, I mean, this was ahead of its time. But it is very realistic and it was very relevant too. You could tell that they that John Void actually had to climb all the way up to the top of the gorge. And they didn't use uh, a stunt man to do that particular stunt. So I found it really interesting that he actually did all that. See something you don't really see these days. And it's amazing. So it even has those tension moments right there that you have to see for yourself. The movie only had a two million budget, but it suddenly became a box office success, and it was nominated for a few Oscars and and even the you know, Golden Globes and stuff. I really wish uh, both uh, Burt Reynolds and John Boyd had gotten nominated for Oscars because. This was definitely their best performances in movie history, especially Burt Reynolds, because he was very good. And so was uh, John Voight, uh, along with um, Ned Beatty and Ronnie Cox. So they were all good, but both of them were the best of them all. It's a very good film, um, highly recommended, especially if you haven't seen it. So anyway, I give Deliverance. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Best wishes to you, Burt Reynolds, because you are truly a legendary guy. And I'm going to miss you. And I'll see you later. Bye.